Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Modern. Today we're looking at Jeskai Lotus Field. Jeskai Lotus Field is a control deck that looks to abuse the synergies between Lotus Field and Blood Sun to Fairy Hero of Dominaria and Flagstones of Trocare. With Blood Sun in play, Lotus Field will enter untapped and not have to sacrifice any lands. Flagstones can fetch any planes, making the sacrifice less painful, and Teferi Hero of Dominaria can untap Lotus Field in your end step for high mana value plays. Like most control decks, Jeskai Lotus Field seeks to control the board with various removal spells such as the Evoke Elementals and eventually take over the game with Teferi's card advantage. Typically, players protect Teferi with Counterspell, but because in this deck Teferi untaps Lotus Field, you can keep up the mana for Cryptic Command or other card advantage spells such as Memory Deluge and Valakut Awakening. Cryptic Command is incredibly good in this deck, and I'll be discussing it more in the Tips and Tricks section. Once you find two Lotus Fields into Fairy, things get nuts. You can churn through tons of cards or start looping Nexus of Fate the same way that Wilderness Reclamation decks do. The deck's main game plan is to outvalue the opponent, primarily with Teferi, and win via his ultimate with or without Nexus loops or beat down with Fury and Solitude. Blood Sun does half a Blood Moon impression, shutting off utility in Man Lands, killing Urza's Saga, etc. However, it's even better than Blood Moon against Fetch Lands since it stops them from being activated at all. Unlike other control decks, Jeskai Lotus Field is more on the ramp value end of the spectrum rather than being pure control. It's a ton of fun to play and generates so much value that it can potentially get out from being far behind. Sideboarding and Weaknesses The deck plays a lot of removal spells and fewer counters than other control decks. As such, it needs a way to transition into other types of cards post-board, leaning heavily on hate cards and force of negation. Like the Cabal Coffers decks, Lotus Field can make many opening hands awkward or unkeepable since you probably can't keep a two land hand if one of them is Lotus Field, and you don't want the card if you don't also have Blood Sun or Flagstones. In general, a lot of the deck has to contort around enabling Lotus Field. Its early turns are awkward and often inefficient. Many times you'll be left unable to play anything on turn 2 and forced to sacrifice your lands to Lotus Field, leaving no mana open and unable to interact. You can't play fetch lands because of Blood Sun. While the deck still has a reasonable spread of colors, it's less consistent than a typical fetch shock mana base would be. Cards that are traditionally good in control decks such as Teferi, Time Raveler, and Archmage's Charm don't work well in Jeskai Lotus Field because of how you have to sequence its lands and the limiting colors of Lotus Field and Flagstones. Teferi Time Raveler is quite good against the deck, similar to its use against Wilderness Reclamation decks because you really want to abuse the ability to untap field with Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Like the Cabal Coffers decks, the deck can be quite bad early in the game between turns 1 to 3. However, if it makes it past that point, it's often unmatched in its power. Tips and Tricks Like with other heavy value decks such as 4 Color Blink, don't be afraid to evoke Solitude or Fury as the deck has many ways to recoup the card disadvantage. Blood Sun shuts off many lands, notably Fetch Lands, Urza Saga, Man Lands, Canopy Lands, and so on. However, this is more of a bonus rather than a strong reason to play the card. Blood Sun doesn't shut off the abilities of lands not on the battlefield, such as Beseju and Cycling Lands. If you bring in Rest in Peace, note that it shuts off Flagstone's ability. Blood Sun turns off the Hexproof on Lotus Field. However, if your opponent tries to destroy Lotus Field, you can bounce Blood Sun with Cryptic Command to turn the Hexproof back on in response. Cryptic Command has a ton of relevant use cases in this deck. To go through some of them, Bouncing Fury or Solitude to reuse their effects. Bouncing to Fairy to protect it. Bouncing Valakut Awakenings that you've played as lands to cast them as their spell mode. Tapping down creatures long enough for Teferi to ultimate. You can often chain back-to-back -back cryptics in this deck. Don't necessarily play every land you draw since they can be used as fodder for Valakut Awakening. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Jeskai Lotus Field. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned to see what deck we look at next time.